as uh, uh, future creative managers, you have to understand, you have to comprehend, you have to see in the in the in the in the screen of your internal projector. Constantly with the background the, of this normal distribution principle, normal distribution curve, the reality, the truth, the fact of normal distribution of uh, uh, abilities, competences, okay, character, normal distribution of uh, ways of expressions and ways of responses and ways of behaviors and ways of action, very critical and ways of relating with uh, colleagues, juniors, seniors, uh, others, customers, clients, the world, and of course the ways of language. That means the uh, uh, ways of the language, meaning let us say creative language competencies. So why, as every one of you said in the beginning, why understanding about, uh, uh, what you call, Understanding about good, understanding about right and correct and proper and uh, etc. are so much uh, subject to individual variations of opinions and uh, approaches and responses. The difference is just because of the differences in their analytical capabilities. So I want you to get out of this 34.1%, 13.6 level positions at all, my dear friends. I want you to have the confidence and the, and the courage to trust you that you are all capable of reaching that rare 2.15 percentage of uh, uh, managers. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You yes, have sir. to be ready. Yes, That's sir. why I am telling you all these things. And I, I want to remind you that uh, p quite possibly you are the only one group of management students uh, perhaps in the whole world uh, who sit down and reflect upon the essence of ethics, the truth of ethics, the reality of ethics, the phenomenon of ethics. I don't want to waste your time in learning so many theories of ethics, so many theories, yeah, so, yeah, so many theories. I, I want uh, primarily, actually, as I told you in the very beginning of the class, uh, my core intent of uh, uh, training you is to, uh, actually only one, to make you as much uh, uh, open as possible for you to the, uh, to the, uh, to the wonderful human power of creative, analytic, observation and thinking and reflection and uh, understanding. All right? Agreed? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Yes, sir. Good and good luck. So, differentiate clearly what is correct and what is right and what is good. And this differentiation, how do you discern, how do you identify, how do you locate the signals of good in, in the so-called bad? Like a, like a competent Scotland Yard uh, detective or an Indian uh, NIA or uh, what you call, uh, Indian officers are also very, very world-class competent in detecting and identifying crimes of all kinds. 1445. So, likewise, I want you to be that, uh, uh, what you call, that uh, uh, constantly try, constantly try every day to become that 2.15% uh, that, uh, of the uh, uh, larger population. In fact, in conventional uh, uh, theories of uh, 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 clinical and other general psychology, uh, people above this point is uh, labeled genius. This is 34.1% above average intelligence, 13.6% uh, uh, superior intelligence, or uh, uh, something like that, and 2.15% uh, very superior, and uh, uh, plus 3 sigma and uh, above, about 0.03% as geniuses. 
If good is good and right is right and correct is correct, you have to identify what is the correct of you. To what extent you can be correct in your understanding of the uh, theories and principles required for your uh, future managerial mind setting? What is correctly required for your job responsibilities? How correctly you understand the role description given to you? How correctly you understand uh, the precise uh, position of your work? Okay, forget about correct. That may be about uh, maybe accounting or reporting uh, fact and things like that. About the right behaviors, right expressions, right responses, right ways of relating with everybody around and beyond. And the, the, the most beautiful language, the most uh, thicker language, the, the finest, the most right language, the, mo the good language, and the most powerful language, so that uh, you can become mentors and guides uh, uh, for other people to understand the truth of ethics of existence and uh, life itself. That's why I want you to give utmost importance to your creative analytic thinking, the quality of your language. That's why I want you to rewrite every document you send to me. Don't be just happy about the first response of your mind. See, see, all your doings are meeting your own definitions of right and good. Be good to you. What is the point if the entire world is talking good about you and if you personally doubt about the goodness of you, what is the point? That is also, uh, that is my way of uh, 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 trying to inspire you to be really ethical as a human entity in this world. I think perhaps that is the real, real core purpose of ethics classes or ethics teachings or ethics philosophies and ethics of all kinds in the whole world is to, uh, I am sure, I don't think anybody in this world will object to me if I say the core object, the core goal of ethics to, is to make a, a human being refined and refined and refined to be a, a wonderful entity in this world. Do you agree? Am I saying something good? <laughs> yes, sir, I am agree sir, with you completely. Yeah. Yes, sir, I agree. Yeah. All right, Archana. So, uh, so uh, I appreciate that you are able to differentiate between, and uh, most of you really got it so quickly, the difference between correct and uh, right, the difference between uh, right and good, and the way that uh, human uh, so-called consciousness is able to feel good about it. So good is, uh, is the name of a certain state of perception, Arjuna. Okay, whereas correct and right are manifestations outside. For example, you see somebody doing correct, somebody doing everything right, then you feel good about him. Because you felt good about that right doing. You felt good about that correctness of doing. So, now we can really wonder, sit there for a moment. That's how the so-called theories of ethics have been formed. There are so many theories about ethics, so that they are all classified. Uh, this is something tentative. There are normative theories, deontological theories, transcendental, uh, uh, professional, transactional, nature process, ethics, etc., etc. Uh, okay. I think every one of you can create your own theory of ethics. Theory of ethics meaning your own theory of what is good, what is right, what is correct, what is proper. And even what is moral. So, now, how these theories were formed? 
Now we will also try some time to create a theory. Rather, we will also try to reflect and meditate upon, for example, what is good. What is good about good? Why good? Like one of you said, being good makes you feel satisfied. Some satisfaction. One of you said it is connected with the feeling of happiness and the pleasure. Yes. All right. So, what is uh, the foundation of good? Why good is good, for example? Why good gives a good feeling? Or what do you mean by good? What do you mean meaning? If the, if the thin pencil, if, or if there is a pencil on your table, if that thing is called a pencil, rather pencil is the name of that thing, Even good, every word in every language is nothing but name. All words in all languages are nothing but names, my dear friends. Like you are named Vibul or Archana or uh, Anushka or um, Arohi and so on and so forth or Priya or Rajanish and Anirudh and Ashokan and all that. To identify you, Every word is a name to identify, to denote some something, some reality or unreality or imagination or visualization or uh, visible and invisible uh, uh, things, uh, infinite of things in this world. So they are all named. Sciences are about naming, physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, statistics, management, these are all creating names and names and names about uh, every new identified entities and things and phenomena, names. So what I said right now in two minutes uh, is a fundamental uh, truth of the universe, which a uh, which great majority of people in the world just does not understand that the language is nothing but names. If they had any clarity of understanding that languages are nothing but names of entities and things and phenomena, they would not have been so many killings and wars and atrocities and all kinds of aggressive so-called unethical behaviors on the part of the so-called human beings educated and uneducated in this world today. They are all fighting for words on behalf of words, on behalf of words and sentences created on behalf of their own just thought process. And they say, I think, therefore I am. If I think, therefore I am, Then, then every individual in this world is right or correct. Because whatever I think is right. I myself, I, even I am nothing but a thought. So thought is fundamental. What is a thought, my dear friends? Nothing but a flow of words, nothing but a structure of words, nothing but a... Uh, a setting of words, that's all. Of course, I am uh, just deviating a little bit uh, uh, to talk about these words, because words are the fundamental. And as I told you, language is the only one tool of uh, modern human beings, the only one tool. And no other tool is anywhere near language. So language is your only tool, so do not take it for granted. 
I also say that the entire world, I am sorry to say even the world of religions are taking their own language for granted. They don't believe, even though they are ready to die for their languages, they just don't believe in their languages either. You understand, Priya? If they believed in their languages of the Bible and the Quran and the Gita and, uh, and uh, 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 the Buddhism or whatever, then they would have lived by that. That's all I say. And there is no evidence that uh, uh, they live by the languages they worship. And uh, uh, why we talk about that is because one of the, or, or perhaps the principal focus of all those religions and philosophies is nothing but uh, the integrity and uh, truth of life. To help uh, refine the human mind and intellect and body and spirit. To make human beings closer to their own so-called gods. So understand uh, all these things. Supply your creative, analytical observation and reflection on all the so-called languages that control the world. And of course, uh, do so uh, in analyzing the languages that control the you, the very you. What language is controlling your expressions, your responses, your approach to life, your behavior, your character, your decision, your purpose in life, my dear friends? What is that language? In that language assembly of your mind, what is the language with which you define you? What is the definition of you? Is it a good definition? Is it a right definition? Let us disregard the correctness about it. Or is it a proper definition? That is proper. Okay, reflect upon that. So I said all those, uh, or I made all those deviations into the details or the core of creative analytical thinking. So let's come back, apply your creative analytic thinking on why good is good. When you observe the world as right and world as wonderful and proper, you all feel good about it. Every human being in this world really, really hopes for a so-called good world. Good by the definition maybe of peaceful world, sympathetic world, helpful world, uh, proper world of equality and equity of uh, distribution, where everybody is happy, where there is no inju injustice applied on other human beings. The most painful experience for every human being is nothing but a, a set of other human beings who are subjected to injustice and aggression and uh, uh, repression. And also when, uh, uh, when uh, human beings like you, uh, uh, communities of them, large, large collectivities of such human beings are starving every day. Even now. When great and great and great amounts of uh, uh, national income are spent on um, uh, creating and buying and developing war weapons in a terrible competition by the so-called uh, national leaders or uh, national governments in the world, guided by their so-called religious and moral principles, 
taking their positions of oath as the presidents or prime ministers on behalf of the so called god when most of them are uh, members uh, ardent members of some religions and visit to the temples and churches and mosques their core of the mind is still on that aggression they don't see poor people they don't see uh, 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 tragedies uh, grabbing greater part of other human beings in other parts of the world what is ethics what is good what is right what is proper what is correct what is what is what is so called uh, 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 right and correct and fair and just and dharma Hmm? Reflect upon all these things, my dear. That is what that's what makes a genius a genius. Genius is the real good state possible for the human entity. Don't get uh, troubled by the campaign of the mediocre world that only totally few people are so called genius. don't be carried away by the images of albert einstein or ramanujam or some huge figures uh, that they are the only geniuses and uh, therefore you are nowhere them all of them began like geniuses they were all known to be so called geniuses by the biographers and uh, sensational story writers only when they made their own some significant contributions which shocked the mediocrity so what the mediocrity does they glorify and deify the so called genius or something extraordinary not at all no genius in the world would dare to say that he or she is made as a special human being whatever that forces that created human being it is there those forces are not evil forces they are not corrupt forces they are not biased political forces they are all true forces of the universe which created every cat equally competent and every human being equally potentially competent and to achieve that is the goodness of uh, you that is your good state for example that gives you the ultimate of satisfaction your own feeling that you are a wonderful person you will know no genius would feel less genius there is no feeling called genius feeling there is no single ability called the ability of a genius i declare that my dear friends because i am one of the top most in the world who completed understanding about genius and creativity and originality and enlightenment so i tell you this with all my trust all my all my force so if good is good the the primary the origin of that goodness of goodness of good is in that goodness of the of the human entity itself what is the point of being real good and good to the world and uh, not uh, not reaching the good state of oneself there are so so called genius individuals in the world who who, who ended up as mad and uncontrolled and died depressed and worried and troubled so are the geniuses not at all they happen to discover something so genius uh, uh, is about inventing something new and all is utter nonsense like the word pencil is about that thing on your table with which you write on a paper the word, the term genius refers to the attendant spirit in you look into any dictionary for example genius means that original self of you
that is the that is the good not just good that is the ultimate good of the, the you like you choose a good cell phone or a good car or a good bike or a good notebook or a good uh, institution so if you believe in good you begin with the good of the you and it is the so called uh, 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 geniuses whether philosophers or uh, uh, thinkers or uh, uh, mystics they were all able to identify what is really clearly good and bad and evil what is really right and wrong what is correct and incorrect they were all really good with their minds and they were all good in their competences of creative analytic observation of the realities in the world who are said that whether socrates or plato or aristotle uh, or kant immanuel kant and all that of the west or the, or the unknown number of uh, great rishis and the seers and mystics of india when you reach your real goodness of you when your mind and intellect and spirit is elevated to the goodness of you you will all see the good everywhere you will see how goodness is possible in the world you will also know how to make a bad a good people simply coming to meet you and interact with you will become automatically inspired to be good like you do you understand what over i say Mm. Are you feeling inspired about what I say? Okay. Do you have any doubt about what I said? No, okay. You are all thinking about what I said? All right. Okay, good. See, I said good <coughs> because I suggested something good, <coughs> and when you uh, uh, expressed your agreement uh, to that goodness, I said good. So agreeing, feeling agreement with the good, behaving in tune with what or is. felt and perceived and experienced as good that is good in which case again why why the so called normal distribution why this uh, uh, educated intelligent people included vary in their perception of good if good is good why it is not good for uh, every other human being so when you say human beings differ so they differ in understanding of good or agreement of good yeah that is the funny thing about good that is the uh, tragedy of humanity or that is the advantage of humanity or that is the beauty of existence that there is bad and evil so that there is a perpetual thrill in the game of existence as you see in all the including in the all the puranas and the dhihasas of all the inner world uh, the classics of inner world they are all narrations of the fight between the good and the bad
the entire world the entire nations of the world they are all positioned in a in a tricky uh, subtle game of good and bad despite all the effort of the very good great god bad is uh, capable of surviving in this world maybe even 50 50 because of the bad and the evil a great lot of systems have been developed in this world a great lot of inventions happened from the lock and key to lock the door uh, is scared of robbery to here uh, to strong houses to strong public group formation to fight against the evil then the weapons to defend the evil when the evil first to discover the weapon the good also had to uh, manage uh, a stock of weapons and uh, the use of weapons so see how many employment has been created in this world then there are military forces maybe i don't know if you look into the internet you may get an exact number of the uh, military forces all kinds of forces of all the world together maybe millions and millions then the policing system the judicial administration system how many lakhs of employees then in every office a, a kind of a cross network of supervising monitoring reporting arrangement so that uh, for every every one person or at least for every three people there is one supervisor manager so so many jobs have been created rather the world is surviving because uh, uh, of that uh, uh, that paradox very interesting from a different point of view if everybody is good in the world it would be perhaps very boring we don't know <laughs> rather the good people are able to feel good because there is bad so good people have an extra feeling of goodness because they know that they are good and they know there is bad and that bad is bad and the bad people can never feel good about them never because not because there are rules and regulations about good not because there are norms about good not because there are so called gods and deities to supervise whether human beings are behaving good but there as i saw told yesterday there is a so called attendant spirit this is so called under chedana that will make a judgment that whatever uh, amount of uh, money you spend to make your name good whatever position you achieve in the society whatever number one you become in the world that you will be continuously haunted by the uh, bombardment of feeling stupid about oneself because that inner being very surprisingly that is the standard of goodness which i am talking right now that inner entity that inner phenomenon that inner energy field is always in the good as i told you every cell of the body the heart and the lungs and the intestine system the hormones and the central nervous system every cell of the body is impeccably good and right and correct in what they do and what they do not do therefore uh, an effect of the energy field so that entity would constantly tell the so called bad that you are bad so i told you what is the basis of good why you feel good when you come across the good archana do you understand yes sir yeah or if i talk a very simple example any guy on the road knows where mohammed rabi's song is good he of course he will not say some song is bad but he would genuinely say oh when i hear this song i feel good he has no training 
in order to enjoy the goodness of music you don't need any training because music is a, musical experience is a very complexly networked neuronal process in the human brain it is sort of functionally autonomous that is a, that you know is a huge network of unique neuronal structures therefore when it is triggered by the music of wonderful creative musicians it automatically induces that feeling of pleasure feeling of enjoyment feeling of happiness feeling of comfort feeling of smoothness so can i ask one thing of course sarjana ask so you said that the good people feel everything good about good but why bad people feel uh, bad about the good <laughs> beautiful question arthra beautiful <laughs> beautiful all right <laughs> yeah normally it is told that uh, the question the one who creates the question would also know the answer or have some idea about the answer so this is a very interesting question what is your own answer to that question you said when good people good meaning not i don't mean just good people good at the level of in tune with the good the genius in oneself such individuals would see everything good and uh, and bad people feel bad about themselves that's what i said right yes sir uh, then in that context what is the principal question you have once again so i said that uh, uh, good people feel everything good about good but why bad people feel everything bad about even good things yeah yeah good question as i told you like uh, when everybody on the road can identify a good song but they cannot sing that song pro arjuna in other words when good is uh, arjuna was implying that uh, good is naturally sort of spontaneously sensed by the attendant spirit or the inner entity of everyone why the entity of the good why the ba- sorry why the bad is feeling bad uh, even about the good that was your question yeah yes, that is why they are bad uh, arjuna their wiring is bad okay i would now uh, uh, right now in order to explain the beautiful point raised by arjuna i would like to just point out uh, theories about crime of course there is about uh, the bad and the evil okay uh, a well known indian perspective indian vedic perspective is about uh, conceptualizing three categories of people arjuna three categories of people that is uh, they are driven by three basic gunas guna meaning for a certain property of the body process okay certain property of the body process so guna is kind of a, a, a tendency of the body the word guna uh, in general means quality or property not quality property for example salt has the guna of <laughs> whatever you taste as salt sugar has another guna okay jaggery has another guna potato has one guna tomato has one guna that means its character so according to those uh, ancient mystics of india human beings uh, are born with three fundamental ten- uh, tendencies or predilections or inclinations by their birth itself those gunas uh, are known to almost every one of you okay that is in sanskrit it is called sattvic rajasic and tamasic 
Yeah. Yeah, come on. Oh, good is good. Good is good, but uh, sometimes good is bad uh, in other point of view. Like uh, when we help the beggar, it's a good, but uh, it's also the cause of unemployment or increase the beggar. So it's a bad also in other point of view. No, no, no. That is, no, no. That is all very ordinary, logically, and Amarjit. This we told you in the beginning. Individuals differ in their creative, analytical competency. Therefore, even when the entire world talks good about something, some people will say bad. That's what right now we are discussing, Amarjit. So, uh, uh, but what Amarjit asked you? There's a point there. That point is this. That is. Ultimately, then, what is good? When we when we talk about the genius, when we talk about the uh, best or the good in creative analytical perception, and if that person says something is good, it is likely to be good. And uh, then someone says, no, it is not good. This is the question by Arjuna too, uh, basically. Uh, yeah, it is a fact, Amarjit. But I want to say, if you are very sure about your creative analytical uh, engines, and if you find something as good, or if you make a judgment about an, an event or an act or a decision as good, it must be good, even if ten people say it is bad. Whether you do it or not is a different question, which is not the point now. All right. So that person, why such people are there? That's what uh, Arjuna also asked, and that is what I am trying to explain now. There are a lot of theories explaining why there is bad people. They are they see bad because they are bad. Like the good see good because they are good, and the bad see bad because they are bad. And why there is bad, why there is good and bad and uh, kind of human beings? That is very sure. People may disagree. Science may disagree. But if you look at the history of humanity, if you look at the crime statistics, if you look at the uh, statistics of various malpractices in any country, you will always see a uh, 30 percent uh, definitely still continuing malpractices despite uh, uh, despite severe punishment systems. Why it is so? That is the wonder. Amarjit is wondering about uh, why somebody is feeling bad about something good. Forget about that. There is a much greater wonder. Despite policing forces, despite jurisprudence, despite all kinds of warnings, why still people do crimes of the of the most blatant kind? That is explained. That is what various theories. So I told you, I don't believe in explaining theories because knowing that theories will not help you. But uh, in order to answer your question, as well as answering the point of Archana, I am telling that, for example, in Indian tradition, the Indian mystics identified uh, three types of three categories of people to cover the entire normal distribution by birth. And there are explanations about that also. That also we will come to a little bit later. But uh, I don't normally uh, go by this because you have, you Amarjit or you Archana or you Anirodh do not have any particular advantage if you come to know that people behave, behave uh, differently because of these three gunas and all that. What advantage? So are you going to tolerate somebody who did a crime because he happened to have that guna? We will punish him, that's all. Therefore, but uh, in order to answer your question, if Archana has a wonder, uh, that is answered by these three primary classification of human beings, Archana and Amarjit. Okay, to begin with the negative, Rajasik. Rajasik uh, are uh, not the negative, Tamasik is the most negative. Okay, all right, begin with the most negative. Tamas meaning darkness. Tamas is a Sanskrit word to mean darkness or blind. For a blind entity, everything will appear unclear. He will uh, do uh, errors and he will fall down or he will injure somebody else, for example. So, tamas meaning blinded. So, so a certain set of people, let us say about 33% uh, of human beings are tamasic by birth. Tamasic meaning they just cannot see. What is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong, what is correct, what is incorrect. They cannot see meaning, they are not able to differentiate the difference. 
when Amarjit says something good, very obviously Amarjit feels it is so clearly it is good, but somebody else will see it as bad because they just cannot see what is good about uh, uh, what uh, Amarjit points out. Amarjit, what to do? What to do? Nothing can be done. It is somewhat like uh, if you look into it is everywhere. Great literature in the world. Do you think uh, Shakespeare's literature is the greatest and everybody says that Shakespeare is the greatest poet? There are oppositions. So that is what the world is. So, uh, so a certain set of people, uh, roughly let us say if you look at the normal distribution curve like a uh, plotting, about 33.3% of people are tamasic, they are blind, they just cannot identify what is good and what is bad and what is wrong. That's why they, are, they, uh, they, they may be able to know. Because that info, let us say, like say bribery is a, a punishable offense. They know, but their inclination. By birth, their tendency, even when they know, they forget at the time of action. When the situation comes, they just forget it. Like the, the, the one who has not practiced the song properly, when he enters on the stage, he forgets everything. That is why most of the culprits, most of the criminals, the rapists, the, the business uh, um, manipulators, they all first deny, no, I did not do it. And in fact, they feel very genuine about it because the act is committed at uh, 3 o'clock uh, on, on Monday. Okay, By 3 o'clock on Tuesday, he feels himself surprised. Why did they do that? He feels, uh, basically, I am not bad. Almost you interview any criminal in the world, they will all say that at the core of my heart I am good. But... Isn't that an excuse? Uh, uh, yeah, Abhishek, that is a very theoretical point. Okay. Uh, that is an excuse, but uh, after having committed a crime, you as a manager or you as a police officer or you as a district magistrate will not leave him scot free. He will punish you. But what I am telling is, something in that person's mind still hold on to think that I am good. So, despite their blindness to what is good, so that is tamasic people. Rajasic people are a little bit firebrand, they understand the good sometimes. They understand good 50% of the time, they don't understand good other 50% of the time. Okay? Because they are fired by emotions, uh, they are quickly, they feel quickly angry, they get quickly irritated and all that. So, they give a hit and then they will say sorry. Yeah, yes, Rohit? Yes, sir. So, uh, as you said that the good, uh, there is a goodness in the good. So, why the people, most of the people are in the agony in our society? Who are the good people? If you see in our society, the most of the people still in pain, they have too many problems, but they are good. But if you see on the other side that this evil person, they are controlling that all the good person. So what do you think that most of the people who are able, they live a fine life 